On this episode of the Infinite Loop Show, Macs are recyclable again. Uh, Casey, they always were. It was just that. No, stop being an Apple apologist. They were wrong, and I was right. Well, Casey, you're an apologist too. Oh yeah. On the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 26. I'm Michael Apologist Gaines. <laughs> I'm Casey, also an apologist, Coglin. <laughs> I don't like apologists. Yeah, but you... I like apples, so. <laughs> I could actually rant about Apple if I really wanted to. Maybe we should do that one day. Right. Maybe we should have an Apple rant no, episode. We never... That's no, that's no, not what the show's about. We never is, do that. Yes, no, this is what we do. We create, I have an evil plan. We create, oh. we, <laughs> we do an Apple rant show that brings all the Android people over. And then the next show, we talk about how great it is. And then they go, <laughs> oh, right. I my rant brings my... all the boys to the yard. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> All right, so uh, first on the list, as we've said in the in the little opener, that um, <laughs> Pete and Repeat are are back together. Apple has Indeed. now. So what what happened with this? I mean, everybody makes it such a big deal like, over it. Yeah, it sounds like there was a heated debate behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and somebody, either Apple or Epeat, just went, "You know what? Screw it. You're off the list," and they just you know stormed out, and then. The kind of aftermath with um, like San Francisco and yeah. the government and everybody saying, well, if that's true, then we're backing out. And then they were like, whoa, whoa, hey, guys, just kidding. I mean, you know, not so fast. <laughs> I, you know, think, uh, <laughs> I think there are a lot of politics involved in this. I think that you're absolutely right that the city of San Francisco and, and, and all the backlash from it were a big deal because mm -hmm. they, they, just, they just pulled it. And like, screw it. We're just pulling it all. And we don't need them. Well, it turns out that I guess they did. Yeah, and so, I guess that made a bigger splash than most people were expecting, or at least either either you know Apple or E. Pete was expecting. Yeah, so they're back on the list, and everybody's happy again. I don't know if this is going to cause any kind of change in in Apple and their in their line. I don't think so. I think this is just um, a political move. Yeah, because they really haven't sussed out the details as far as the retina display being um, legitimately recyclable or if they're still standing on that, uh, you know, perch that the the parts being glued together and not really using screws is yeah. going to not meet their certification. So one of two things is going to happen. Either e Pete's going to have to make an exception and say, you know what, we, usually we wouldn't do this, but since Apple will recycle them through their stores responsibly, then, you know, hey, cool, you can have this cert. Right. Or e Pete's going to have to, somebody's going to have to rewrite the certification. Because, uh, I mean, I don't expect, like we said last week, I would imagine future PCs and Macs and, and just computers and devices of of every genre going more and more towards this mm -hmm. where, you know, we want everything smaller and thinner. They're not going to always have room to put screws and stuff in. Yeah. So I would foresee more PCs and Macs going this route where they're glued sure. together rather than less. Yeah. So this is sort of the would, point we're making last week. It's almost the exact yeah. same argument. Whereas like, last right. week we said, well, I think they're going to have to change things because this is the way that the direction is going with technology. And then here they go, Burp, we're back on the list. And I, I think you're absolutely right. Is that this is, I mean, 10 years from now, five years from now, is this going to be the way that, well, maybe not desktop PCs, but portable devices, laptops. Possibly desktops if, if we're talking all in ones. Maybe we want those to be thin and you know stylish. So it's a, well all in ones. Yes, I I completely agree with you on all in ones. But I'm still towers. No, yeah. those are 
those will probably go reverse and get bigger. <laughs> I you still know. put my PCs together. I, I can't see an all-in-one being in my future for on the PC side. No, and that's just what? for gaming. So I'm not any kind of like Windows fanboy or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Apple stores are doing overnights next week on July Yay! 24th. So what do you think this means? Oh, I don't know. A new OS? Maybe. <laughs> um, so a lot of people were saying that this is kind of bizarre doing overnights in the stores because the new Mountain Lion OS is only being sold in the Mac App Store. So mm-hmm. it's all online. Why do the retailers have to be there overnight in the store? Right. One reason. They got to change everything. The displays, the actual demo units, possibly, you know, the actual units they have there, they might open, install Lion, and then close back up. Mm-hmm. So oh, that's a that's, good point. That's a lot of work on their end. Right. And so we're expecting Lion on July 25th. This is not a big secret. We all know that the GM has been out for developers. And so we knew that it was going to come out before the end of July. As you and said last actually- week... Right, and this is actually happening exactly as it did last year mm-hmm. because July 25th is their earnings call. Oh, and I didn't know that. Last year, when they did their earnings call, they said, oh, and by the way, Lion's out today. Go get it. <laughs> so it kind of looks like they're going to be doing the exact same thing. You know, on the earnings call, they'll be like, oh, by the way, Mountain Lion dropped today. Have fun. <laughs> Go You're get welcome. It. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way, it's only twenty dollars. I know. Isn't that I can't amazing? wait. So next, yeah, our next show will be uh, we'll have Mountain Lion. Will I? Is it that, oh, next yeah, Wednesday? We will. Yeah, next Wednesday. Well, you'll have. Well, I'll have Mountain Lion. Well, I already have it, but we'll um, all have. Mountain I'm a Lion. developer, but but we'll we'll all officially have it. Except it'll be on my MacBook Pro and not my Mac Pro. I'm a sad panda. Yes. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, the the big news about the Department of Justice and, and this this whole ebook collusion story seems to be getting out of hand. Um, what's what I thought was going to happen is happening is that um, right now the um, Chuck Schumer uh, mm-hmm. in the uh, United States Justice Department is saying that this whole thing has got to go away mm-hmm. because it's just going to hurt too many people. Yeah. Um, there's an op-ed piece uh, by Chuck Schumer, and he wrote, I'm going to quote him. It says, recently the Department of Justice filed suit against Apple and major publishers, alleging that they colluded to raise prices in the digital books market. While the claim sounds plausible on its face, the suit could wipe out the publishing industry as we know it, making it much harder for young authors to get published. This is what I was saying. I said it's going to be harder for people to get out there. Uh, the suit will restore Amazon to the dominant position atop the ebooks market it <laughs> occupied for years before competition arrived in the form of Apple. If that happens, consumers will be forced to accept whatever prices Amazon sets, which is what I, everybody has I still been saying. Can, yeah, I still contend that this is a load of BS, and I think Schumer is probably getting checks from Amazon, or at least getting lobbied from Amazon. Um, the whole thing about young indie developers or uh, writers not being able to publish as easy that's a load of crap i apple put out their um ibook author for free Mm -hmm. so worst case scenario sure you gotta you know give apple 30 percent but i mean let's you know cry me a river that's still (laughs) way easier than it has been in the past for publishers to published to mm-hmm. really literally put out anything and that's not even counting um all the other ways people have been getting published thanks to the internet thanks to um uh, blogs and podcasts and everything nowadays um the there's a one publisher and the name escapes me i want to say it starts with an s but it's it's uh simon schuster no, it, it's it's a little lesser known company that will actually publish and print books for anybody, like any indie person. You don't need any kind of you know contract or deal or anything. They'll just bind and publish whoever you know for a set amount, mm-hmm. uh, for a fee. And again, you know that that is giving way to indie people who you don't need to have. 
um, a publicist. You don't need to have an agent to break into the industry. Just like GarageBand and iTunes made it easier for musicians to just record, um, you know, on a low budget with minimal uh, middlemen. You know, iBook uh, author and I foresee the iBook store mm-hmm. being the same for writers and publishers alike. Yeah. So. I have a feeling this is going to get dropped at some point. Yeah, um, Schumer needs to really, like, this is, you know, a big deal. Like, this is the most important thing that um, senators should be well, wasting their time on. No, I, I mean, really. It affects a lot of people, though, because if Amazon does wind up becoming a, the, the top of the list again, it's going to hurt a lot of publishers. A lot of people. Our unemployment rate affects a lot of people. Mm. Our, you know, rising housing costs affect a lot of people. Uh, know. You know, Iraq, Afghanistan affect a lot of people. <laughs> Seriously. Mm. All right. What What's going to affect us as iPhone users is that the new cases are rolling in. Yeah. We're seeing them for sale. I don't know why they're for sale already when the damn thing isn't <laughs> even know, out yet. Right? <laughs> Quick, get a jump on that. But to, there's an you article know, that says, eh, "Well, you know, they're for sale." Okay, if you want to get yours maybe several months early. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You're going to be swimming in iPhone cases. <laughs> I just will need an iPhone to put in them. There's nothing that, that's here that we don't already know. It's taller. And it's <gasps> what? Thinner. Shut up. Oh, yeah, my God. It is. Really, it is. I kid you not. It's taller and thinner. <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave that there. and. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why? What kind of joke you got in your head? Nothing, nothing. No, Casey and I have been looking at uh, the the iPhone five news. I don't think there's anything here that's new. We just thought that it was funny that they're actually for sale. We're not yeah. going to say where because I mean, who knows? Because they're going to like run out the minute the iPhone drops. You're not going to be able to get a case anywhere. You better get on this and no. buy your cases now. <laughs> there's going to be a serious iPhone case shortage come October there and November. There will be. Yeah. Actually, I'm, for the first time in a while, I'm going to have to buy a new case because if everything is yeah. true, and we're pretty sure that it is, if these yeah. are taller phones, That's, yeah. then I have to buy a new case for my belt Every buckle. Every two years, you got to buy a new case. Oh, it's horrible. No, I've had this the same form factor for so, well, since the 3G, I think. What? Because the the 3- 3G had the rounded... Yeah, Plastic. but the, the the case that I ha- well, because n- I don't have an outside case. I have a oh have a, oh, you mean the belt the belt clip, clip thing. thing the the super cool one that only the cool kids have. Hey, don't knock the belt clip. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, what's with AT and T charging for FaceTime? What is this? Um, yeah. Both oh, yeah, AT and T Verizon yeah. are just I I don't know what they're doing. You know, between this and their new, like, multi-device family plans, it just really feels like they've found new ways to screw us over, <laughs> Nine, you know? 9to5Mac Mac is, is uh, reporting that iOS 6 FaceTime over cellular feature is going to have users go to uh, at ts website or call 611 to activate this thing, and you're going to have to pay for FaceTime over cellular. But they don't say how much. Yeah, I mean, well, duh, you're going to have to pay for it over cellular one way or another, whether you do it in data or this, you know, separate way. Like, it sounds like they're going to concoct a secondary data plan just for FaceTime, which would be bizarre and silly. And again, just another way to bend us over, really. (laughs) I know you know a lot of people say things about AT and T, but I would rather stick with AT and T than go with the evil red Verizon. I'm not a big fan of Verizon. No, I I agree. Like neither one is good, and it's like <clears throat> there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere. There's no other carrier it's, that's better. Well, what are you going to do? Sprint in my area oh, is not oh, bad. Yeah, I totally forgot. No, Sprint in my area is not bad. We've got 4G LTE. The problem that I have with Sprint was when I was a Sprint customer with a USB 3G stick or US, the thing that mm-hmm. I had all, a couple of years ago, I had problems with their silly billing system. It's like uh, you, can't, you can't pay for your account automatically until you've paid manually for three months. When they send you the bill, there's no phone number. 
and you can't pay over the web. You have to actually call it in. It was ridiculous. And yeah, so I did, yeah, I dropped them. So I, I said, no, I'm never going to Sprint again. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, again, with iOS 6 beta 3. Uh, yeah, nine, that nine, just came out what, the other day. Mm-hmm. 9 to 5 Mac is reporting that uh, users that have currently a uh, me.com account are uh, they're getting an, an at iCloud.com account. So if you're, let's say, Fred at me.com, you'll now be Fred at iCloud.com, which to me may seem a little cool, but I, also, I always liked having the, the two letter domain in my email address. I always use the, the Mac.com. Well, Still. I, I use that too, but some like whenever I tell somebody my email address or I write it, you know, down or or give it out, it's even though it probably at this point almost certainly um, redirects to at me dot com, and soon we'll you know transition over once again to mm-hmm. at iCloud dot com. I still give people until it totally becomes a non thing and I can't even use it. So long as they'll redirect from it, I'm always gonna give people at Mac dot com. Yeah. I don't know. There's a certain amount I mean, sure great me's two letters, but at Mac. Mac. I like Macs. I'm gonna use <laughs> Mac. And and saying at iCloud dot com just doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? No, not at all. That's like much longer and why like it's not I guess maybe if it's hip, if you didn't know all the the previous iteration, if you like are just coming into the Apple world right now, cool. You have <laughs> at it. Have all the iCloud dot coms you want. Now, I think I'm going to do the same thing that you do. I'm going to stick with giving people my uh, me dot com or mac dot com in your case uh, email address until we know that they're going to shut it down. But even then, like I've got a whole bunch of stuff attached to it. And then you know what it's yeah. like when you have to sort of rip account addresses away. It's a pain yeah, in the neck. especially with like old game accounts. Oh my god! Yeah, Sometimes they really make you jump through a lot of loops, and you gotta like go and get. I have an old, or I had. I uh, used to use a Netscape dot net email address. Oh man, that was my very first email address. And there's some games that the account was attached to that and in order to change it over they want you to like go get an email that they sent to that address and i mean netscape is long gone i have no way of getting email there Mm -hmm. so i'm like how am i gonna go get this authentication email you sent me to click a link you know and authorize the switch to like gmail or mac or whatever (laughs) when you can't curious yeah. I don't know. So, uh, there's also a report, uh, 9 to 5 Mac, they're showing what's new in iOS 6 Beta 3. There's a lot. Um, yes. And I will be able to report on them later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I j- it just finished downloading because I've been so oh, busy it? moving and everything. But you had a uh, you had a problem with your with your iPhone. Why don't you tell a little story about what happened to your iPhone at Comic-Con? <laughs> Well, I dropped it. It landed right on its face and shattered the glass. Well, you didn't. Well, you didn't drop it intentionally. Like a test, I was actually showing somebody um, the iOS six features and what was different, and like, why do you like iPhone? Right? You know that whole age old debate at this point. Oh yeah. Um, and so I'm going through, and we're you know sh- shuffling you know inch by inch in the line for the panel at Comic Con, and um, Somebody running by, you know, just hit my arm and it flipped and landed directly on its face. Really, the only way to shatter your iPhone, shatter it, Mm -hmm. is if it lands directly on its face. Yep. Which most of the time it doesn't. And most of the time it's going to land on a a corner or an edge um, right on its face. Like, Mm -hmm. worst possible scenario. And it just was absolutely shattered. Um, so I put some tape on it to hold it in for um, until I could get to an Apple store and have it replaced. And you had to have the glass replaced because if you didn't, then you'd have to get a new phone and then you'd Well, have... I got an all-new phone. Oh, you they did don't... get an all-new phone. Because the um, the the screen and the glass are, are one. 
unit. And yeah. at this point, it's just far easier and quicker for Apple to replace it with a refurbished iPhone of the same, you know, color model size. Oh. So they just swap it out really quick. Because when my wife uh, broke her screen, they said that she had to pay $150 for a new screen, not a new phone. They paid $199 plus tax, and they swap it out with a new phone. Well, a refurbished. And, and you're not uh, out of new- contract? No, no, because this is just between you and Apple. The carrier has no okay. idea. You're not no, renewing okay. your contract. It's not a new new phone. It's you know a hardware replacement on Apple's end. Oh, if I, I had see. bought Apple Care for ninety nine bucks, um, then they would have replaced it for fifty dollars. So mm. it's still kind of. I mean, it's still to me. It's like one hundred and fifty or one ninety nine. Yeah. You know. So I'm. I'm taking because I mean I'm only gonna have these phones for a year. Let's be serious. Um, <laughs> Four months, so, maybe. <laughs> you know, I'm taking. I'm betting that I'm not going to shatter it in that year, which generally is a pretty <laughs> good bet. This year it wasn't, and then of course they try to sell you it. Hey, and now you that you dropped it, you see the value, don't you? Don't yeah. you want to buy out there? And I'm like, I'm only gonna have this for like three more months. No. Yeah, exactly. All right. Anyway, back to uh, the nine to five Mac article. So the the changes in iOS six beta three that they're showing, um, they've got new unit labels for maps. Um, let me see. They also show the evolution of maps from um, beta one to beta three, which are a little different. Uh, they've got the um, uh, what is it? The at iCloud dot com email address, also. Mm-hmm. So. That's that's pretty much it right now. I, you know, even though I'm a developer, I haven't been using iOS six at all because I'm still testing some stuff in iOS. It's an iOS four and five app, so I have mm. to. I want to stay in there and see what yeah, everybody's yeah. using. I don't have a phone that I could put iOS six on. So, um, the biggest thing that I've heard and I've heard, I haven't been able to test this out yet. Um, that the the constant crashing and i have experienced this myself um with not just the os but also random third-party apps just constantly crashing back to the um the home screen Hmm. um seems a lot more prevalent in ios 6.0.1 and dot one and even a little bit more in dot two too um this uh, beta three is supposed to just totally fix all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will be looking forward to that if that's the case. A lot of people were reporting on that. Hmm. Uh, there has been a hack by um, <laughs> uh, someone in Russia. This is interesting. The mm-hmm. way that he does this, it allows you to get around Apple's in-app purchasing system, and yeah. the, it's it's very com- well. Some people say that it's convoluted. Some people say that it's simple. It depends on 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 how you um, All right your level technology. of programming yeah. and knowledge. I think of these things. You have to change. Uh, what is it? Your domain. Let me um, see. It's, I mean, well, not your domain. Your I um, believe you uh, have to you know clear out any of your own credentials. Yeah. Possibly download a certificate, DNS, and then yeah, you change the change um, the actual address that it's routing to and it's it's amazing i and i don't mean amazing in a good way i mean i'm just saying that <laughs> that what what this person has done is amazing in the sense that he went through all this trouble in order to get it to to, to work it's not legal it's not right you know morally and legally um but it's it's like these people that write um uh what is it mmo servers they, all the yeah. work that they went through to reverse engineer how everything works is, is almost amazing. And yeah. so Apple's trying to shut this whole thing down, obviously. Right. And they pro- you know what they may have to do? But I- it seems like they're almost, I don't know. I mean, I would think that their first thing, well, I guess maybe their first action would be to try to shut this guy down. But I would think they're, you know equally first thing they would be doing is trying to fix this loop and it's mm-hmm. been out there for a while and this uh russian dude has been able to like move his servers around and yeah. and apple keeps you know giving him notices saying look can you p- pretty please stop doing this 
And he's like, look, you know, until it's not a thing anymore, until there isn't a workaround, Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave the server up to let people work around it. So, So, um, there's a list of things that are transferred, um, over when you, when you do in app purchases, there's a restriction level of the app. Hmm. Harmless. The ID of the app, the ID of the version, the GUID of your device, that's big. Uh, Mm -hmm. Quantity of in-app purchase, offer name, language that you're using, identifier of the application, version of the application in your locale. Um, There was a report um, that said that you can also, uh, this hack can also be modified to grab data from other research, from other apps, like your bank Mm -hmm. account. Yeah. So... I yeah. haven't heard a whole lot on that. The m- biggest thing I think everybody is really kind of freaked out about is uh, that it's returning info on your specific device. Yeah, and I don't know if I would trust all this information <laughs> over a non-secured system. All right, so yeah, you get around yeah. the 99 cents for whatever game level that you're you're doing, but then in the long run, somebody steals a whole bunch of information about your Right, your this system. is, I mean, they say jailbreaking is unsecure and opens you up. Not in the least. This is far less secure than any sort of jailbreak at least with jailbreaking you can change your root password um, sure. and controls so your om- I mean not totally but almost at the same level of security that you would be if you hadn't jailbroken at all but this you're totally wide open yeah. totally just you know with your pants down yeah don't do it it's not worth it in the long run it just isn't worth it. I know. The most shit is 99 cents anyways. Come on. <laughs> you know, did you ever see that article, not article, uh, that cartoon by the, um, by the oatmeal about how like Apple users pay $500 for a phone and you know, like how much for an app and how much for a peripheral. Uh, and, then, and then they go, mm-hmm. what? 99 cents for an app. That's outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So anyway, moving on to rapid fire. Um, Microsoft announced that they are not bringing Office 2013 to the Mac. This is crazy. You think it will eventually be be ported over? Or do you think at this point just people don't care? I mean, how important is Office nowadays? I mean, it is. Look, it is in in, in the office. In the enterprise, in, in the enterprise it, it's huge. In the office, Office is very important. But is is this is this Microsoft sticking it to Apple or yes? You, you think so? Yeah, you think that, this that, is Microsoft being a little bitch and, <laughs> you know, trying to be like, you know what? Well, fine, you're going to do that. Well, we're going to go over here and you can't have any of our <laughs> cheesecake. Well, they did say that they're going to have uh, SkyDrive integration in Office 2011. Well, okay. But okay, you, I think that cares? this literally, honey- if you're a Mac user with 2011, you've got Time Machine, you've got Dropbox, you've got like so many other venues. Mm-hmm. SkyDrive is like the dumbest little bone they could throw. I don't know what penetration Apple has in the enterprise. I really don't. I mean, it. It. I don't think it's much. I mean, Windows has that locked down. and so that's why I think Microsoft can do this: is that they can stick it to Apple and say, well. This is the best we're going to give you. And then it, it it sort of cements the domination of Microsoft in the enterprise market. Yeah, no, I know what they're trying to do, obviously. You know, they're, they want to say, hey, right, hey, yeah. you're in the enterprise, you're going to do business, well, then you need to be on Windows. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, it it kind of feels like, I don't like, this new office 2013 they kind of have this idea like it's going to be just so great on windows you just you can't you can't even like comprehend it mac users you just (laughs) you can't even like look at it you can't even have it if you want this awesomeness you have to come to windows so have fun over there with 2011 we're going to be over here in the party (laughs) and really i all right, look, you can always run boot camp for one thing. You can run True. virtual PC. There are ways that you can run yeah. Office 2013 on a Mac if you absolutely have to. It's just a question of what it your just, company is willing to do to, to get you to run it. 
It seems just really childish and immature, quite frankly. They've been releasing Office for Mac forever, and now they're just going to stop out of the blue? Well, I I think it has... What are they doing over there that's so great that they need to close down this unit? Unless they got nothing going on, and they're (laughs) actually trying to consolidate because they're losing money? Maybe. The way that I see it, what may be happening is... With Steve passing, uh, the honeymoon between Microsoft and Apple mm-hmm. may be over. Mm-hmm. And now everybody's getting back to butting heads. Um, you know, Steve's, uh, Steve's line about how for Apple to win, Microsoft must lose from 97 may be over. Um, Microsoft may be saying, we don't need you at all. Uh, yeah, Steve Ballmer and Tim Cook don't have the... Uh- Romance that Bill Gates and Steve Jobs had? <laughs> Probably not. Well, you know, it was a different time. Uh, Bomber <laughs> you know, was around in were, the early days, but... Yeah, you know, it was college. They were experimenting. It is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Firefox 14 was just released a couple days ago, and they have a ton of security features. Um, one, which is quite interesting, is that by default now, it enc- encrypts your Google searches. So that if you're on a Wi-Fi or a wired network with somebody snooping around, um, which I know people can do because we had to, at my last job, we had to look at the packets um, to make sure that our communications between what we were doing and the printers were working correctly. Um, if somebody is unscrupulous and, and sniffs that data, they can see what you're searching for. So now, by default, it's encrypted. That's good. And they added a whole bunch of other security features. Um, what... What they did for the Mac, uh, the reason why I added this in here, is they have full screen support for Lion now. I don't know how big oh, of a good. deal that is for people. <laughs> do you really, do you use full screen apps? No. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I, 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 I did like when care. it first came out, I'm like, this is cool. Okay, now back to normal. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> does anybody out there actually care about full screen apps? Because I just don't. No, like even on my 15-inch laptop where you think like for the smaller screen that maybe it would be a bigger deal. And okay, maybe not on the 27-inch iMac, you know, you want to go full screen on everything. Mm -hmm. But on the smaller screens, maybe, no, not really. I still like mold. There's almost all the time I have at least two browser windows side by side like, you know, uh, size so that they're fifty percent of the screen. Yeah. Um, if not other windows on top of that, but almost never full screen. Uh, Microsoft released uh, a new iPad app for Xbox Live, and I gotta say, it looks pretty slick. I haven't taken a look at it. Of course, I haven't fired up my Xbox in in a long time. <laughs> When was the last time you turned on your Xbox 360? <laughs> and she's thinking. <laughs> when the Kinect came out, when the Kinect was still new, you know, and we, we got the Kinect bar and played, I played Dance Central mm-hmm. a few times, but then that was it. That's it. Um, anyway, it's, um, it's a really nice looking app. I don't know how often I'm going to use it, um, and as a matter of fact, I probably you know maybe I should try using it today because I have some friends that I communicate with on Xbox Live voice chat because they don't like using Vent when we're playing <laughs> WoW. I don't understand that whole thing, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, it, mm. but um, I'm going to see if they're online, like, like just to, just to see what I'm, I'm able to do if I can send the messages and such. You do that. While you're doing that, yes. I'm going to read Batman Earth 1 now that it's in the <laughs> iBook store. I saw that. I saw that. It's amazing. So, mm-hmm. so, to, all right, so first off, tell everybody what's Batman Earth 1. It's just the latest Batman graphic novel. Okay. Um, kind of going along the um, infinite Earths. That's still a going little on? Bit. No, it's not. But, I mean, it's, it's going... It it's it's got the multiple Earth yeah. you know dynamic in it, um, but this is a big deal because it's DC's first comic book graphic novel in the iBookstore. Marvel has had quite a few in there to start, mm-hmm. and they were really the only ones. Now DC is 
you know, picking up the pace and, and putting them not just in comiXology in their own app, but also the iBook store. That's huge. So now it, it's like everybody is in this game. Like they all have their own image, Marvel, DC have their own apps. And then they're also in the comiXology app, which is nice because it has all the houses under one app. Um, but then they're also, you know, throwing a few bones to the iBook store, which is nice. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I hope that it works out for DC. Um, I have really been sticking with the comicsology because mm-hmm. it's just a convenient place to put everything. Right, because it's got split up. all of them in one app. Like I was saying, you know, it's it's far more convenient. And I do really like um, the comic book layout on the iPad, specifically because you can go panel by panel. I really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> now, this was an interesting story today uh, because of the uh, the Samsung suit. Uh, <laughs> Images of the earliest known iPad prototypes have been leaked. Well, no, I wouldn't say leaked. More like... Oh, they, they, it's, yeah, it's cutting edge stuff. No, no I, I shouldn't... Well, I, I use the word leak because sometimes Apple likes to just keep their old history stuff uh, under wraps. But because of the suit, all this information about how long Apple's been working on this has been coming out. And this thing is... it It's huge. It's, it's an inch thick. It's gigantic. <laughs> and it's just obviously built with the, probably the best that they could back in 2002. So, yeah, this was back in 2002. I mean, anybody who's read the Walter Isaacson, mm-hmm. um, Steve Jobs biography knows that Apple has been working on the iPad for for forever, mm-hmm. it seems like, Um before the iPhone even. A lot of the technology that they were developing for the iPad went into the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Uh, for you know logistical reasons, they decided that the iPhone should come out first and that it, that needed to you know, be there at that time. And sure. they were absolutely right. Um, and then you know, brought out the iPad after that. But this early one is... You know, I mean, comparing it even to the first iPad that we actually got, it's bigger. Like, the screen size is, what, like 12 inches yeah. or something? And it's thick. But I think the biggest thing that we were both kind of like, oh, was that it's buttonless. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know what it looks like? It reminds me of the bottom of a Mac MacBook. Not a MacBook Pro, a MacBook. The, like a white shell. MacBook. Yeah. Yeah. But an yeah. inch thick, it, yeah, and and it was buttonless. Uh, we didn't get a lot of information about its use and everything. I, I saw a couple of, of sketch drawings and, and uh, a picture of some, either a developer or an actor or somebody just. He like, looks using like he's it. pretending. He, yeah, to he's use pretending it. to like, use his little etch a sketch. <laughs> yeah, he's like, God damn, my arm hurts. This thing is so heavy. Oh, can you imagine but, how much uh, the thing must have weighed back then? I know. Um. But yeah, like true to I would imagine Steve's original yeah. epiphany, it was completely buttonless and probably what he would have always wanted it to move towards. But I think um, for practical reasons, they kept the uh, the home and sleep button a thing. I I don't mind the home button at all. No, it's like it's it's one button. Boohoo! I don't know. <laughs> I, it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal. Yeah. Um, one button has been a thing with Macs forever. You know, mm-hmm. no Mac is ever really buttonless. They get down to one button, and then that's about sure. it. <laughs> Remember the programmers' buttons on the back of the old sixty-eight thousand machines? It's like if you want to debug yeah. something, you had to press the programmers' button in the back, and if you had Mac app, then it would bring you to the debugger. Remember those days? No. Yeah, they were really. Um, Which one is that on? I wonder if they. Um, that was. I don't think that was on a Mac Plus. I think that was on the. It was on the S. GS. Maybe no, no. I don't know if it was on that, but it was like on the two CI, the CX, the SE. I mean, under the SE, the SI. Oh, we have an Apple two C. I think. Well, no, that, that's an old Apple machine. I'm talking about Max. Oh, oh, yeah. um. God, I'll have to look. I don't think the Macintosh SE I have on my desk at work has it. I haven't seen I it. Remember. I think I would have noticed that. Yeah. It was, is there a reset button on it? I don't think so. There, on, I think on it those only machines. has the one power button in the back. But it, it's like a later Macintosh because it's got a hard drive in it. 
Uh. So it's it's like the later like eighty seven or something model. Yeah, these machines had a reset button and a programmer's button. God, reset like a NES or Sega Genesis. <laughs> All right, let's move on to apps before we go. Um, mine this week, uh, we've been doing a lot of iOS apps. And so I thought, you know, I was actually looking at my phone before we started recording. I'm like, I don't have anything here. <laughs> yeah. I think I've used them all, like show number 26. And I think I was really stretching for those like like first 12 or last 12, I should say. I need to yeah go sit in the app store after this because I really I haven't done that in a long time and just really you know peruse the app store and download a bunch of crap. <laughs> uh, mine this week is for OS 10. It's called VLC Video Land Client. It's an app that I use when QuickTime Player just isn't enough. And what I mean by <laughs> that is that QuickTime Player, as good as it is and as lightweight as it is sometimes just doesn't do enough for me. Like for example, I downloaded an MP4 uh, just yesterday and it didn't play right. It played all funky. It would, the screen would change from black to white to black to white and have a whole bunch of pixels on it. Threw it in VLC, worked fine. That's almost always the case. If you have a video clip or, you know, or even just a weird... Uh, file format that you mm -hmm. can't get to open or play correctly, mm -hmm. almost always VLC will do the trick. Sure. And this is both on Mac and Windows. Uh, you can get a videoland.org. And um, yeah, it'll play, it'll play like VOB files, .vob files, which are the, the mm. native format of, of uh, DVDs. It'll play Blu-ray files that uh, QuickTime Player won't. Uh, QuickTime Player will say, we need a codec and VLC. Wait, Mike, are you ripping Blu-rays? Maybe. <laughs> when the Retina Display iPad came out, I'm like, the first thing that I did was I took Tron Legacy, and I'm like, I just got to see what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not that we condone ripping Blu-rays. No, we don't. I mean, I only keep the stuff for myself, but um, it's it's far better convenient because then you don't have mm -hmm, to put mm -hmm. the disc in, wait for it to look. I just have a couple I of I keep movies trying to tell go, you discs are over, man. You need to get away from it's discs. Not, no, but it's not. Media the, in general is done. I'm not. I am not ignorant to how convenient <laughs> and cool digital files are, but there are just some things that you, you just don't get with a raw digital All files. the kids nowadays, you know, they're downloading their digital files and drinking their Paps Blue Ribbon. You need to get Whoa, with the times. Whoa, <laughs> Paps Blue Ribbon. <laughs> Oh my god. All right. So what's your app? All right. So my app is a a silly little game that I've been playing on my iPhone probably like every other night before I go to bed. And it's one of those that you you use so much you don't even think about it and you're yeah. like, "Oh yeah, I use that a lot, I think." Um it's a game called Flow. Mm -hmm. It's very simplistic. Uh they have a free version and a paid version and it's a puzzle game and I like those like uh, they're it's a more relaxing type of you know, gaming uh, experience than, you know, your stressful rating or in WoW or DDO or anything what? like that. That's not stressful. Uh, well, rating <laughs> is almost always stressful for me. I don't oh, know. Stressful Maybe because I'm a healer, so <laughs> I make it stressful, I guess. Oh, that's right. You play. Yeah, I have a story to tell you after we stop recording. Um, <laughs> ooh, well. <laughs> from from um, yesterday. But anyways, uh, Flow is is just a really nice puzzle game, and it gets you know it starts out relatively easy, like most puzzle games, and it gets progressively more difficult. Um, and it seems to have an infinite number of boards to go through. It mm -hmm. like I've gotten through over a hundred boards at this point, and there doesn't seem to be any end in sight. So hmm. infinite playability, really. <laughs> On the infinite loop show, <gasps> and what a great way to end the show. You know what? I did that on purpose. Oh, totally. did you? Mm -hmm. oh, you're clever. Yeah. <laughs> and my microphone uh, just turned. Okay, so let's end this here before I figure out. Uh, my microphone just tilted. If you want to contact uh, what? You're looking at I hear when they I hear when they get older, you know, they tend to do that. Oh, they no. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's just uh, for some reason the screw got loose. I mean, I haven't touched this thing in like a year or two. So. Uh, see, that's your problem. you got to touch it more. Yeah, I guess so. If you want to contact us, <laughs> I am at Star Mike on Twitter. 
Go ahead, say yours, because you get mad at me. I am Casey Queso, K-A-C-E-Y-K-A-S-O, the Casey, not the cheese. Yeah. If you don't get that, write to me at Star Mike, and I'll explain it to you, because yeah. it took me a while to figure it out. Porque Mikael habla español. Oh, my goodness. Mierda. Uh, <laughs> you can email us infiniteloop.tv at gmail.com. Of course, we're at infiniteloop.tv. No, wait, what's our Gmail? Oh, God, I keep forgetting our Gmail account. Is wow, it- we are the infinite loop show at gmail.com. I keep infinite loop up. show on Google Plus, on the Facebook. But we're infinite loop TV uh, on Twitter. Infinite loop TV on That's Twitter. That's the one I keep different. messing up. I. Uh, we're also the infinite loop show on iTunes. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> Send us a review. We like reviews. We especially we like, like good reviews. reviews. How else are we going to get better if you guys don't tell us what we're doing wrong? We're going to get better because uh, we're going to work Unless we're not doing things. anything wrong. Unless I'm just fabulous the way I am. Just just you? Just I, I don't want to point any fingers, but perhaps I'm fabulous. Okay. <laughs> and what about me? Not that I'm fishing for a compliment or anything, but okay. So Casey, not the cheese. <laughs> wow. All Mine right. Thanks for watching nervous. and listening. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>